how's it going, everybody? Brooke Fletcher here, and welcome back to another episode of the third half. We have a great show planned for you guys this evening. The Tigers, they're gearing up for opening day here soon. And with that, I sat down with Tigers pitcher Spencer Turnbull. He had quite the season last year, has been working hard to build off of that uh, coming into this season, so I had a chance to sit down and talk with him. While the Tigers are gearing up for their season, the Griffins, their season is underway. So I sat down with Riley Barber. He's a Michigan native and signed with the Red Wings organization this offseason. So I played a fun game with him to try to get to know him and uh, see uh, what he's excited about being back playing in front of a home crowd. Lots to get into, but first, let's start with our news of the week. Well, it's official. One of the biggest trades in Detroit Lions history is now complete. The deal bringing quarterback Jared Goff and a slew of draft picks to Detroit in exchange for quarterback Matthew Stafford officially hit the NFL books and transaction wire this week. Matthew made a farewell video to pay tribute to the city of Detroit and Lions fans that his wife Kelly posted on her Instagram page. I know I speak for everyone saying we wish nothing but the best for Matthew and his family. And hey, we're excited to welcome Jared to Detroit. Free agency is underway and so is March Madness as teams settled into their San Antonio bubble life for the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Personnel found themselves shocked by the lack of a legitimate weight room for players, especially compared with the elaborate men's tournament weight room set up in Indianapolis. Now, after a video was posted on social media of the women's setup, it got an overwhelming response, one of those being from star basketball player Steph Curry. Now, the NCAA did respond and said they are currently working on finding a solution for the ladies, so hopefully they can get something figured out. And speaking of solutions, just one day after the unveiling of Ford Field's vaccine clinic, Governor Gretchen Whitmer held a press conference to announce more people will be allowed to attend outdoor sporting events including the Detroit Tigers opening day. More than 8,000 fans will be able to attend on April 1st. Great news for Tigers fans, and I know the players will be excited to have fans back in the stands cheering them on. And one of those players is Spencer Turnbull. Now, he had quite the season last year with the Tigers and is looking to build off of that coming into this season. It had been a while since we caught up with him, so I had a chance to sit down, see what he's been up to and what he's looking forward to most about the Tigers this upcoming season. You're down in Lakeland now, and I know you're a big golfer, so have you kind of carved some time to, to hit the golf course? I have a few times, a few times. Yeah. yeah. Have you, uh, who, who's good at golf on, on the team? Uh, I usually play with, like, uh, Griner um, or Jacoby or uh, Tyler Alexander sometimes. I hear AJ's really good, too. Um, it's, it's his handicap speaks Says he's good. I haven't seen him play, but I'm, I'm sure he's really good. Oh, just excuse my dog. Yeah, I was just—I was gonna say, who's who's, who's that behind yeah. you? This is my roommate's dog. This is uh, Frank. Um, he hey, Frank. To, Frank, you want to say hi to Spit? No, he's yeah. he's, <laughs> he's just chilling. Here, yeah, we have a couple weeks until the regular season. So, I mean, what are you looking forward to most about getting back out uh, at Comerica Park? Fans, hopefully. That's yeah, definitely the biggest difference this year. I'm hoping to see. Um, just, you know, just missing the game, just getting back in competitive games again. Um, last year was fun. It was weird, but it was fun. I'm glad we got at least a part of the season in. That was really cool. But just kind of getting back to some sort of normalcy or getting whatever that, that buzzword is right now, but getting closer to it. So you, you kind of touched on AJ a little bit. You talked about his golf game. Apparently he's really good at golf. But, uh, you know, now that you've had some time with them in spring training, Chris Fetter as well, like kind of describe what it's been like with them, getting to know them and your relationship. Uh, I think it's been awesome so far. I was, I was excited. I was excited about the hire. I thought it was a really good hire. Um, I didn't know anything about Chris Fetter, but I knew AJ was, you know, he was really good. So I was excited about that. Um, and Chris has been really good too. I, he, he knows a ton. Um, he's been very helpful um, so far. And like I said, I think just some of the conversations that me and AJ have had, me and Chris have had up to this point, I feel like I've already gotten better. So I'm just excited to see what that turns into after a full season. Yeah, I talked to Casey and Tarek in the offseason, and they just said great things about Chris because he's a younger guy. I feel like you guys can, like, really relate to him and have some fun with him. But, uh, I mean, speaking of rotation, I mean, what do you make of this rotation this season? What are you thinking? I like the way it's shaping up. I think we're going to be really – solid in the rotation we've got a lot of options um we have a deeper rotation this year we have a really solid bullpen too so um i'm just kind of i'm i'm curious to see what it actually shapes up to be for the start of the season but um 
we already kind of know. And there's definitely like probably a group of about 10 guys or so that are in that mix. Um, it's just kind of cool to see that. Yeah, no, I, I know fans are excited to see you guys back at Comerica, but Spencer, you know we love games here, so we're gonna we're gonna play uh, just a little game. It's just it's very simple. I don't know if you can consider it a game. It's just a fill in the blank. Is there is this like a like if I win I get something if I lose <laughs> no, I lose something there's here? No bets or, this time. There's no. Is there, bets. Is, it, is there gonna be like a roll tide shout out from you this time? If, no, I don't oh, want to embarrass okay. you, so we don't we don't oh, embarrass okay. you again. Right. I should say so we we can leave the bets. You leave the best be. All right, uh, let's start with the first one. The most exciting part of this team is blank. I think the most exciting part of this team is I think we're going to be really good. Yeah. And like I, I actually I'm really getting excited to see like how it's starting to shape up. I mean, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. You will consider the season a success if blank. I think being in a real playoff hunt. I mean, I've, for sure, making the playoffs would be a huge success for us this year, and I think we have a really good chance to do that. Um, but just being just having like a just a winning mindset for the whole year. I don't want to look too much at results, but I think we have a real shot to make the playoffs. This in any direction you want. The biggest surprise from spring training was blank. I think the biggest surprise from spring training was not having to shag BP as, as pitchers. I think that was my favorite part. Do you usually during, have to? During spring training for hours, yes. We're normally out there standing for hours shagging BP. I think for me, that's part of, like, also the early mornings are not my favorite. And we've, we've been starting to, like, practice closer to 10 every day, which is really nice. Um, but I think not having to be out there, a lot of it's COVID protocol stuff. So gotcha. that's, been, that's been a nice benefit for the pitchers, not having to just stand out there and shag BP every day. Because that's part of what makes you so tired in spring training because cool. you're on your legs in cleats all day long. That's nice. You get some extra sleep. So mm -hmm. it all works out. Love all right, well, uh, well, Spencer, you got me really excited about this season. We, everybody is uh, excited to see you guys back in Detroit here in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for being with me, and best of luck the rest of spring training, all right? Appreciate it. Thank you, Brooke. All right. Well, like I said earlier, the Tigers are gearing up for their season, but the Grand Rapids Griffins are about halfway through theirs. And one stud on the team is Riley Barber. He signed with the Red Wings organization this offseason and has made quite the name for himself so far this season. So I sat down with him because I know fans want to get to know him, and I wanted to see what it's like being back and playing in front of his family and friends. Well, how does it feel to be back in Michigan and close to where you grew up? Um, you know, it, it feels great to be back uh, to be back home. And, you know, over my years of playing pro, like, you know, it was always the thought that maybe I could be able to, uh, to sign with Detroit and make a – you know, be able to play at home to get that call and then to, to work it out and finally uh, do a contract was great. You've been performing really well, especially offensively. So what's been working so well for you? Yeah, I think, you know, the chemistry I have, you know, with uh, my teammates and the line mates and, you know, obviously, um, you know, we've been playing well as a team and that's always, you know, a positive as well. I mean, when you're winning games as a team, it seems that everybody's kind of doing their job and everybody's succeeding, you know, individually. So, you know, it's just great to uh, to get on a roll, but, you know, the season's not over yet, so you just want to keep uh, pedal to the metal. Well, one of the unique things about this year are the taxi squads. So you kind of have been going back and forth, right, between Grand Rapids and the taxi squad. So kind of walk me through, like, what's that been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 been such a different year on so many aspects. I think you just have to kind of roll with the punches. And, you know, the taxi squad's kind of a new thing for everybody. Uh, I feel like the teams are even trying to figure it out as well. And, you know, it's an interesting part, uh, part of the game. And, you know, I think you just got to, you know, focus where you're at at that day and, you know, things can change quick. Well, I know Red Wings fans are excited to, to get to know you. So we're going to play a little game if you're down. Yeah. Um, okay. It's pretty simple. It's called once never forever. So I have a list of categories here, three things within that category. And you're going to tell me which one you would only do once, which one you would never do or which one you would always do. Okay. Make It'll make sense once I list them. Okay. All right, all right. Let's start with the first one. Music, hip hop, rock, country. Always country. Okay. Um, never rock and once hip hop. Sports you play besides hockey, football, soccer, basketball. Oh man. Uh, probably never soccer. Okay. Um, once basketball. And always football. Okay. Not much of a runner? 
don't no, I? <laughs> no. I, I can't run and, and uh, dribble the ball at the same time. It's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> I feel you on that. I feel you on that. All right. Takeout food. Chinese, Mexican, Italian. I think always Mexican, um, once Italian. And uh, what was the other one? Chinese. Yeah, never really Chinese. So. Or Chinese. Yeah, I, I'm a big Mexican fan. Um, okay, movie genre. Horror, action, comedy. Always comedy, never horror. Really don't like scary movies. And then uh, once some um, action. Favorite comedy? Oh, man. Uh, it'd have to be Wedding Crashers. Why did I know you were going to say that? I just I had this feeling in my head. I was like, I think he likes Wedding Crashers. Oh, it's, it's, I could watch it all day, every day. It's a classic. No, oh, it's so good. So good. <laughs> okay. And finally, lockdown activities that were popular during quarantine. Uh, join TikTok, baked banana bread, because a lot of, a lot of people were doing that, yeah. or a uh, complete a thousand piece puzzle. I tried to complete a puzzle. It did not end well. I couldn't figure it out. So never puzzle. Okay. Um, I joined TikTok. I don't post any videos, but it takes up a lot of my time. So probably always TikTok. And then, um, yeah, banana bread. I don't, I'm not a very good cook. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. TikTok, it'll get you. It's like a black hole. Next thing you know, it's like two hours and you're, you're still on the app. And you're not sure what you're even watching half the time, but it, right. it, it really takes the time up. All right, Riley. Well, thank you so much for being with me and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right. It was great getting to know Riley and I wish him the best of luck the rest of the season. All right. It's been a great show, you guys, but uh, I got one more thing. Now I'm doing something special with my one more thing this month because March is Women's History Month. I wanted to highlight trailblazers in the sports industry. Now this woman has been a voice for all women in the sports world. Billie Jean King, the tennis legend, has spent her entire career fighting for equal rights for women in sports. And the Hall of Famer started the Women in Sports Foundation, which pushes young girls to reach their fullest potential in not only sports, but in every area of life. I know a lot of women in the sports world uh, really look up to Billie Jean King for not only what she does on the court, but off as well. So, of course, I wanted to talk about her. All right. Well, it's been a good show, you guys, but you know what time it is. I gotta let you go. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.